Were you here when I laid the foundations on the deep? Which the Holy Spirit's going to answer and go, yes, I was. Yes, I was. As a master craftsman, I was with God, and now I dwell in you. So you have questions? Ask me. That next piece is he introduces Job to Jesus. And he says, Have you commanded the morning since your days begun and caused the dawn to know its place? We all know that this is poetry and it's symbolic. That it, the dawn, may take hold of the ends of the earth and shake the wicked out of it. So Job's question is about evil and wickedness and he's going, hey, let me introduce you to this person who is called the dawn, who rises like the sun, and like the sun, takes the ends of the earth and shakes the wicked out of it. It's so good. And it stands out like a garment from the wicked, and there its light was withheld. And its uprised arm is broken, meaning the proud, meaning evil. Evil that taunts humanity is broken. And he's... And, um, so he's introducing the Holy Spirit, the character of Jesus, going, this is who I need you to know because it takes on form like clay under a seal, which as we know clay symbolizes what? Humanity. So he's introduced him to the Holy Spirit. He's introduced him to Jesus. And then his next section is he's now going to introduce him to why evil happens in the earth. And that's what we'll do next week, and we'll wrap up all of Job. Because there's mysteries in here about why evil exists, and he's starting to tell Job, here's what really happened to you. Here's what really happened. And he starts to unwrap some of the mysteries about the evil that roams the earth, and why it's there, and what to do about it. But I'm going to go back to our brain being able to handle this cognitive dissonance, which is we all have had some level of brain damage. When I got right down to it, I went, really, our core issue is brain damage, which is no mystery why Jesus and John the Baptist, first words out of the mouth were repent, which actually was metanoia, which is think higher with God, think, a thought, think another thought, think again. It wasn't say you're sorry for what you've done wrong. It was come into new thinking because the kingdom of God is at hand. Our key salvation is in God's redemption of our very mind processes. It's how we come into our true selves. So, the Lord was reminding me this week that that is a huge part of why we even decided to do desert outpouring. When we were doing like our small groups, I was super happy just doing small groups because like we could start one, we could end one, and then we had no commitment in between. And that seemed genius to us. And after about five or six of them, um, I was like, okay, Lord, when's our next one? I think Lindsay was going like, when's our next one? And I, and, right, and remember, and I was like, we need to pray about it because something's not going right. And we started praying more about it. And the Lord said to me, I'm not going to keep pouring out the revelation, meaning himself. What I'm interested in doing is building a container that can hold it. And I saw right away that the container that can hold a revelation, meaning the presence of God, is a community of people. It's not just one person, it's not just me. It's a community of people who can hold the wisdom of God. And he had said to me, Ange, if you're not willing to make a weekly commitment to people to grow up into maturity, he said, then, then we're not going further in this. It's okay, we'll be home, we'll love on your kids, we'll do the you know, family thing, but if you wanna run in where I'm running with the redemption of humanity, I can't do that with like, here's two weeks here, here's three weeks here, here's five weeks here. He goes, this is a process where people are going to grow up into maturity and, and carry my very presence in all the earth. And the way to do that is for their minds to be renewed, for them to think in new ways. And then he said this, and this is what hooked me, and the whole reason like why we're doing this thing. He said, don't you want to see how fast 100 people could run when they're all in community together, looking at each other, seeing each other the way that I see them? And I had come to realize already how powerful it was for me to agree with God regarding Darby, for me to agree with God regarding Greg. In an atmosphere of one person who's willing to agree with God, other people, their mirror neurons, are lit up as a possibility to what you're seeing. So let me give you an example of how mirror neurons work. 
You have a kid at home who has a favorite or has a toy they haven't played with in a year. Anybody, right? You haven't played with that toy in a year. A friend comes over and sees that toy under the couch, pulls it out and starts to play with it and immediately your kid decides that is the most important toy on the planet. Why? Because their mirror neurons are activated by the desire of the other kid wanting the toy that they have had access to for a year and never cared about. Our mirror neurons don't just reflect what other people are doing, they reflect what other people want. So for, do you, do you, are you tracking with me? So one kid's mirror neurons are lit up and he makes an executive function whether or not to agree with that other person's desire. But they didn't realize that they were in the atmosphere of desiring a toy they don't care about. They just felt a desire and they agreed with it. We are all affected by each other's desires and each other's thinking. You know this because how many of us are with people and we find ourselves less than our true selves around certain people? Right? We find ourselves just not, and how many of us have had a fantastic teacher or coach and we find ourselves way better than ourselves around that person? That's not just the power of their actions, it's the power of their intention and their belief about us literally made it possible for our brain to imagine what they think about us. It's all, it already happens. How many of you have been around somebody and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm with them and they just drain my energy? That's part of mirror, mirror neurons at work because their belief system doesn't coincide with yours and you can feel the difference that it pulls energy from you. It's, not just, like, it's just so cool that God made us this way because that's what God was saying when one man's belief, one woman's belief with God is greater than an entire city's agreement with the enemy. Our agreement, one human who is willing to agree with God is greater than a massive amount of people's agreement with negativity. We just haven't fully experienced the power of that because we haven't ever owned that assignment to have authority over evil. We haven't owned it. We've hoped it, we've wanted it, we've begged it. But we haven't known that we were the agent who agrees with God that causes evil to be shaken from the earth. So when we're in an atmosphere, that's why this is so important to gather together, when we're in an atmosphere with other people who are learning how to agree with God about themselves and about each other, it literally helps heal our brain. It literally helps our brain when we are in the atmosphere of another person who sees us more than, than we see ourselves, the way God sees us, it literally helps their brain heal. I just saw the Lord just showed me that this week. I was like, ah, I mean, I knew it by perception, but I didn't know it by science. Like, God's not shown me the science of this for the two years we've been doing this. How crazy is, like, ah, this, I'm so, I'm sorry. Like, I'm so excited about that. Like, how did he hold, I mean, the science has been here for like, you know, a couple decades, but I didn't run across it until just recently that this is, and that's why people go like, I literally feel my brain, you know, changing in this atmosphere because it literally is and we've had people have that happen one gal who's God told him you know when I came to this session he told me I'm gonna change the neurology of your brain but she didn't even know what he was saying but she wrote it in her journal and then as Greg and I were sharing some of our stories she goes I feel my brain literally changing right now so there are so many things that we can do but one of them is just pray over your brain just bless your brain because we are the agents in the earth to heal all injustice and all evil. Partner with the Holy Spirit in your brain becoming more adaptive. Take advantage of every time your brain splits apart and you go crazy to let the Holy Spirit speak in the middle of the whirlwind and show you what's happening and heal it. And then there's a couple of other people who are doing some great brain science that I can tell you about later and most of you know about the brain state guy which, Greg, or which I did and Abraham did and it, it was hugely helpful. Other people in this room have done it and so we can talk about that. But I believe that that's like a huge part of our, I was going to say mandate and the Lord goes, don't use that word. It is a huge part of our gift to the world is to be agents 
of partnering with God in the healing of people's perceptions and their brain and their ability to operate in their true authentic selves. So, so cool is that, right? Yay! So, okay, any other thoughts or comments? I probably, oh, I went over, but not too bad. Yeah, Dustin, you're just giving a thumbs up. Yay! Right? It's, go ahead. Um, it made me totally think, um, so God says, do not conform to the ways of this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, mm -hmm. by the washing of the water of the word. And then his word is the Holy Spirit. He says, in the end days, I'll pour out my spirit like water on all flesh. So it actually washes and transforms our mind. And then that's why the enemy's been trying to hit with like religiosity, the works, because it's the opposite of faith through grace. By receiving, we hear, we receive, and it washes. Um, and then, oh yeah, I was dwelling in, in the glory of God like a couple nights ago, and the Holy Spirit just came over me and was healing my brain, and my brain got healed first, and then my back here, and then around my, my right side of my hip, and then Yay. down my right leg, and it was all combined in that order. And I remembered it in that order to just like reflect upon it, but I always knew, you know, it was, it was harm in my mind, and then it affected and hurt my body from all yeah. that. Still in the process of healing, but yeah, interesting stuff, because we heal, like you said, pray over the mind, and yeah. that'll, that'll heal the body. It's so good, and, and I think it's so too. helpful to us to have compassion for the choices that we make when we are lacking our access to all the parts of our capacity. It also can help us pause when we're in the midst of a moment where we are confronting that disequilibrium. I mean, don't you like, right? Haven't you like literally felt nauseous or felt like your brain literally like starting to like be distanced from, you have no ability to like access your ability to think fully. And we can just pause in that moment and go, okay, Holy Spirit, Help stand me upright in the middle of this whirlwind. Help me take a time out for 20 minutes if that's what I need to do so that I can stand upright in the midst of Elihu and friends who are reflecting back to me a reality that is counter to who you say I am. Because if we continue to go after trying to please that atmosphere, we will lose touch with our whole selves completely. If we let those voices speak, you know, into who we are, we, we lose our, our humanity. And, and we lose, you know, all of who the Holy Spirit is. Because there is no wisdom in those places. I just love it. So, we didn't get to these. These are the things that cause the brain to ask questions. And what most of us have been taught, don't take it too literally. Don't expect answers from this. God's too far and distant. Who do you think you are? And we're gonna, I'm going to keep these up, honey. I don't want you to erase them because I want us to come back less, next week and we're going to wrap up the end of Job. I kid you not. And these are the questions that he might give you a different answer than he's going to give Aiden, than he's going to give Kristen, than he's going to give me. His answers sometimes are a healing Sometimes they're a specific answer. Who he wants to be for us in these is different for each person because it's so relational and so intimate. And so these are the pieces that God's going, I want to be something for you here in these questions. And so I want you to not forget these. Write it down on your card. Take it home with you and see if God doesn't start to talk to you about whichever one of these is yours. And I want us to come back next week and go, here's what God started to tell me about this question. Because that's like, yeah, and if somebody else's questions were super good and you loved them, then write those ones down too. Because that is like all he wants to do is talk to us about who we are, who he is, and what's going on here. Like those are his three favorite topics. Who you are, who he is, what he's doing. Okay, Bailey's are going to come up and do prophetic practice, which you all are familiar with. So yay, hooray, thank you.